everybody for having me here. Um, let's let's talk about FlexAlgo, which is an extension to ISIS and OSPF, and makes use of segment routing for lightweight traffic engineering. So in segment routing, there's a prefix segment. So the prefix segment follows the least cost, least cost path from its uh, ingress to egress. So um, in, in, in intradomain uh, gateway protocol, uh, calculates the least cost path uh, for this prefix segment. So now um, and what a network operator can do is he can configure multiple prefix segments ending on the same node and then use FlexAlgo to influence how IGP calculates the least cost path from each of these segments. So um, therefore, now you, you can see that each prefix segment can have its own path from ingress. So it can traverse a unique set of links. So, um, And what type of um, uh, calculation uh, should be used for, uh, for the path computation? For example, um, the well-known uh, calculation type is uh, SPF, which is shortest path first. And what kind of con constraints should be used uh, for calculating uh, uh, the path? And, and all this um, uh, flex algorithm definition is uh, identified using an identifier and advertised in um, ISIS or OSPF. So um, now a segment endpoint advertises multiple prefix segments um, associated with uh, each one with a FAD. So, and also each node uh, uh, advertises uh, which flex algorithms it participates in. So in a network, a single node can participate in one or more flex algorithms. So um, once the flex algorithm definition is in place and also prefix segment for each flex algorithm um, is in place, then each node calculates uh, multiple least cost paths to the segment endpoint. So once each for, um, uh, uh, for each FAD or the prefix segment. So now we have the least cost path that can traverse a unique set of links. So let us see what are the popular use cases where FlexAlgo can be used. The first one we will see low latency and high bandwidth paths. So let us take a use case here. So R1, R2, R3, and R4. So um, the, um, uh, all the flows um, supposed to follow the lowest latency path available. So, um, and, uh, but there is some uh, high bandwidth flows, uh, they must avoid 10 gig links. So here this red link is a 10 gig link, uh, whereas all the green links are 100 gig links. So a traffic that is going from R1 to R4, all the traffic should follow low, low latency path. So R1 to R4 directly, uh, because that is the lowest latency path. Whereas high bandwidth traffic, should uh, uh, should you should not use this R1 to R4 link because that's a um, 10 gig link. So let's see some details of how the network, uh, the metrics are assigned and how the administrative groups are assigned uh, in this in example network. So we can see that um, uh, IGP metric is 400 on the R1, R2, um, R1 to R3, R3 to R4 and R2 to R4 links. All the green links are 400 metric and the R1 to R4 link uh, is uh, the IGP metric is 300. And similarly, the TE metric is also uh, congruent to IGP metric in this example. 
and then there are administrative groups associated with the links. So all the 100 gig links are blue links and the uh, uh, 10 gig link is a red link. So let us see how to define flex algo definitions um, to satisfy the use case that we are looking for. So we have two flex algos here. One is a low latency flex algo, and then another is a high bandwidth flex algo. So the low, for the low latency FAD, we have um, a metric type as IGP metric, calculation type is SPF, and then constraint is include all links. The second FAD is a high bandwidth FAD. This has a metric type of IGP again and calculation type of um, SPF, uh, but it has a constraint exclude red links. So, um, so how does the, uh, the uh, uh, solution work end to end? So R4, so let's see how, um, how to uh, select, uh, you know, a uh, low latency uh, and, a, uh, uh, and a two separate paths. That is one is low latency and another is high bandwidth for the destination R4. So for R4, um, R4 advertises uh, uh, segment A. So uh, the segment A is associated with low latency FAD and R4 also advertises another segment, which is segment B, and then it associates it with high bandwidth FAD. So, um, um, so R1 calculates the least cost path uh, to segment A. So the least cost path from R1 to R4 is next stop is R4 on that R1, R4 link. So because for the, um, uh, uh, for the um, uh, 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 FAD for low latency, all the links will appear in the topology. So it will calculate the lowest, uh, cost path to R4, which is why R1 to R4 through the red link. Now R1 cal also calculates another path to segment B. And uh, so, so this segment B is next stop is ECMP uh, from R1 to R2 to R4 uh, and R1 to R3 to R4. So because in the um, second flex algo, the red link will not appear because that has been excluded from the flex algo definition. So the um, path from R1 to R4 would follow the green links. So that's how we get uh, multiple paths, low latency and high bandwidth paths uh, using uh, Flex Algo. Let's now see another use case, uh, which is path diversity. So let's say the requirement here in this case is um, we have red red flows that should traverse red links and no others. So the, the example topology uh, is as shown here on the right. Uh, R1 to R2, R2 to R4 are red links. R1 to R3, R3 to R4 are blue links. And the second, there is a second flow, which is an orange flow. And the um, rule for this orange flow is it has to prefer red links. And if there is a failure, it can follow fail over to blue links. So we have a third flow, which has, which is blue flow. Uh, so this, these uh, traffic flow should traverse only blue links. And if there's a failure, traffic would drop. It, it would never go on the re uh, red links. And we have a yellow flow that prefers blue links, but if there is a failure, it will fail over to the red links. So let us see using flex algo how this can be achieved. So um, we have two kinds of metric, IGP metric and TE metric, and we have uh, administrative groups. So um, the IGP metrics, the red links have um, 200 and the blue links have 400. Go back to the picture. So IGP metric for red links is 200 and the blue links is 400. Similarly, the TE metric is 200 for the blue links and 400 for the red links. And then the administrative groups are, are, have been assigned um, as shown. The red, all the red links will have red administrative groups and the blue links have the blue administrative group associated with them. So the, once these um, uh, link attributes get associated, so the link attributes will get advertised in uh, ISIS or OSPF. So um, now we have flex algo, we have 
defined four flex algos red orange blue and yellow so red and orange i uh, use igp as the metric type the red uh, flex algo has exclude um, blue links um whereas the orange flex algo has the constraint um, include all the links similarly the blue uh, flex algo has a metric type of te metric calculation type of spf and then it has constraints that exclude red links and then there we have yellow um, flex algo which uses metric type as te metric and calculation type as spf and then it has include all um uh, uh include all constraint so now let's see how can we um, uh, uh uh get this use case satisfied so uh, we we taking the same use case traffic is flowing from r1 to r4 and then we have this uh, uh, red orange yellow and blue flex algos defined so r4 advertises four prefix segments uh segment a is associated with red b is associated with orange c uh, with blue and then um, d with um, uh, yellow and now based on the flex algo definition r1 calculates four different paths to each of these prefix segments so the first one r1 uh, to r4 we can see the red and the orange so they both use um, igp metric as the uh, metric type uh, so the let's first see the red uh, prefix segment for uh, uh, segment a which is for the red uh, flex algo so for this one the next hop is r2 uh, because it uses um, only red links and it doesn't even see blue links and um, um uh, uh, and uses um, r1 to r2 as its next stop to reach r4 and there is no fail failover in case r1 to r2 link fails or r2 to r4 link fails traffic would drop there is no failover because the traffic doesn't uh, is restricted to uh, flow on blue links and then we have uh, another prefix segment uh, b which is orange flex algo and this has uh, it uses igp metric but it 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 includes all the links so the entire topology is visible to this flex algo so r1 to r4 you would see um um uh, the path is from r1 to r2 uh, r2 to r4 uh, for the orange flex algo and if there is a failure from on r1 to r2 link or r2 to r4 link it would choose the um, path via this dotted orange line which is from r1 to r3 to r4 and similar uh, we can see that um, uh, for the blue and the yellow flex algo uh, we could see that uh, a similar behavior but whereas it uses te metric so you would see for the blue flex algo the path from r1 to r4 is r1 through the via the blue links because the the te metric is lower on these blue links uh, and then the blue flex algo there is no failover uh, the next prefix segment d for the yellow flex algo that uses te metric as well so the the primary path is from r1 r1 to r3 to r4 but if there is a failure on r1 to r3 link or um, r3 to r4 link then it, then it uses um the uh, dotted yellow line that is r1 to r2 to r4 um as its failover path so so a flex algo is a very powerful feature so many networks only require a very coarse grain te and in as in the use cases described above flex algo solves these use cases in a very easy way just using igp extensions so um, and also another advantage is that the same um, solution could probably be achieved with uh, segment routing te by uh, stacking uh, a, a number of labels but then the advantage with flex algo is that you could achieve the same same thing with the single um a uh, single segment uh and there is no need to uh, specify te policy on a controller or um do any kind of head end computation the paths are computed in igp itself 
and this is operationally very simple because the flex algo definitions have to be configured just on one one or two nodes and not not necessarily on every node in the network another advantage of flex, uh, this is also that so uh, um, in this exam in this presentation we saw mostly um, the um, uh, the examples that used mpls labels but because this flex algo uses just the igp extensions this can this is can be extended uh, and used only for uh, ip networks like where when there, where there is no mpls you could achieve uh, traffic engineering just in ip networks as well uh, in ipv4 as well as ipv6 networks so that's that's pretty much i had um, any questions yeah, thank you for your talk. Um, unfortunately, we had uh, sound issues again during the first minute or two. Uh, we hope to fix it uh, in the recording. Otherwise, we might do a voiceover with it or have a look at it. I haven't collected any questions yet, but I think they will come in soon. Uh, according to the chat, the people liked your talk. There are a lot of clapping hands coming up now. And let's see if they have got any questions. Not yet. No, not really. Probably they will have to think about it again, uh, about the benefits of, of using it. Ah, now they've got the first. Uh, can I contact you after the recording for question as it was sadly incomplete? Yeah, I said well, the, the first two minutes were, were missing again. Are you open for questions later on? Yes, definitely. Okay. Definitely. Uh, how, how complicated is it to integrate into a running network? So to make the switch um so uh, in a running network so you will have to enable um, flex algo on uh, uh, you have to upgrade your uh, routers um, um, so uh, because this is based on igp and the spf computation happens on every node so if you want um, you know all the nodes to participate in your flex algo all those nodes have to be upgraded um, uh, that support this um, uh, flex algo feature. And once uh, you've done that, you're, let's say if you, you have existing metric configuration and existing admin color um, configurations, all those will be reused. All you need to do is choose one or two routers and define your flex algo definition and then uh, you're good to go. Is it possible to run it uh, parallel to LDP RSVP, so does it is it capable to coexist with these protocols? Yes, 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 definitely. It, it can coexist with LDP and RSVP as well. Okay. So I think that's all we got for questions now. Thank you very much for your talk. Have a great yeah. time uh, at DNOC and sure. see you 